Hi everyone, it's Meredith with Soul Navigation, your evolutionary astrologer, and today is going to be really, really fascinating because I am going to tell you the top 15 things that Venus does for you in your chart. What does Venus mean? What does Venus stand for? Um, what does Venus create? Why is Venus important? And you're not going to want to miss number 15, so stay tuned all the way through this video because it's going to shock you. We're going to do deep astrology today. As you know, we don't do sun sign astrology, so um, you're going to see a new face to Venus. And by the way, after this video, my next video is going to take you through the different uh, signs in Venus, and then we're going to go through the houses. So you need to know two really specific things when we're looking at Venus. What sign is your Venus in and what house is your Venus in? You're only going to know the house by based on basically your birth time. And um, you don't need your birth time to know in what sign your Venus is in. And it's absolutely critical that you know where your Venus is. And I'll tell you why. Venus shows us how and where we get our pleasures in this life. It shows us what we enjoy doing, what makes us happy. It shows us how easy it is to accept the cards that we have been dealt in life. Venus is tricky because it's actually a mirror and we rarely like somebody, or I should say, we rarely don't like somebody who likes us. So when somebody likes us, we usually like them back. Not always, but uh, we usually do. So Venus is um, this mirror that's like a mutual attraction. And it, it has a magnetism in it. Um, what is going to be attracted to you is also usually something that you are simultaneously attracted to. So it is the mirror in the chart. It is how we get pleasure and how we like to please others. It is also our happiness planet. So it is how we embrace happiness, receive happiness, and create happiness. So the first thing I want to say is, is if you don't know where your Venus is, you can go over to my soulnavigation.com website, click on the shop button, and you can go get the starter package, which will give you the deep dive report and also my absolutely gorgeous, exquisitely beautiful natal chart. Or you can sign up to be a super supporter and you get all that plus so much more for free. So if you want to know where your Venus is, just become a super supporter and check out my other video on um, all the perks and bennies that you get because it's really fun. Okay, let's do number one. The number one thing that Venus represents in your chart is your enjoyment. What do you enjoy? Now, where Venus is in your chart and in what sign it's in your chart is going to show you how critical and how important pleasure, enjoyment, and happiness is for you. It's also going to show how do you please others? Are you easy to please? Is it in a prominent place in your chart? Is it right on the rising sign? Then you're probably easy to please and you probably please easily. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also your happiness factor. So number one is your enjoyment, your pleasure, and your happiness. How high is your happiness factor? Well, if you have a really bang on loud Venus, you probably have a huge happiness factor. Number two, what makes Venus so important and valuable? Well, it is the feminine energy in your chart. Venus in a man's chart is what he's attracted to. It is uh, represents what kind of beauty are you attracted to? It's important, really important to have Venus compatibility with your partner because you want mutual attraction. Also, a man's moon is how women will show up in his life. So he is going to attract his moon and his Venus qualities. So if you're gay, gay men are going to attract their sun or their moon over 
Venus. But, and if you are a gay woman, you're going to be drawn to, to other women who embody your moon, your Venus, or your Mars. And if you're a straight female, Venus is going to be what you feel pleased by and what you're attracted to and how you show up inside relationship. Number three, Venus will show you the principle of giving in a person's chart. So if you want to be with a really generous person, you want to have a Venus in Leo or a Venus in Sag. You want to have some fire in your Venus, right? And we're going to go through the signs in the houses in my next video. And by the way, if you're a super supporter, I'm going to take this conversation behind the scenes and we're going to go deep, deep, deep. So if you're not a su super supporter yet, just join the club. Join the family. It's really, really fun. And we go even deeper behind the scenes. Venus is going to describe a person person's capacity to give. It's going to describe how strongly or how easily it is for you to give. Think about giving in a different way too, though, because it's an energetic gift as well. How well do you lend your energy to others? Um, how well and how easy is it for you? What kind of capacity, large or small, um, open-hearted and generous, or is it restrictive and quiet? Do you have, what kind of capacity do you have to give of time, of money, of affection, etc. right? Also, think about how easy it is for you to yield under pressure. So does your placement want to avoid opposition? Is it passive and, and kind of shy? Is it hard for you to unzip yourself and give of your energy to others? So this is kind of like, how easy is it for you to share yourself? So that's what I mean by the principle of giving. Number four, this is how we give and receive affection. Venus describes how we feel about being literally physically close to another person and how we go about getting it and achieving it. Venus, a Venus Jupiter person just like purrs with affection and a Venus Saturn person you know, is sort of somebody who is more restrictive and you have to work extra hard to get them to open up to you. So you have to look at Venus and what planet it's sitting next to also as a third way to understand the Venus in your chart. Number five, Venus describes how civilized you are because Venus is going to show you your manners and how courteous you are and how civilized is your behavior. <laughs> you know, are you rough around the edges? You probably have a louder Mars than Venus. Are you super elegant and dainty and drink out of a crystal glass? Then you might have a strong Venus. By the way, this is icy cold water. Don't worry too much about me. How raw are your edges? Are you coarse? Are you gruff? Are you rough? Um, like discourteous behavior is anti-Venus. So this is your level of politeness and kindness. And are you overly sweet, overly fawning, overly flattering? Then your Venus is big. I did say your Venus is big. <laughs> Number six. Venus will show you your charm. Do you ooze charm? So don't misunderstand. Mars is going to say, I want what I want, right? So do you have a bigger Mars or Venus? And Venus is going to say, I want what I want, but I also want what you want. <laughs> That's Venus. So don't misunderstand. It's not unselfish. It's not like it is completely selfless. We get our way, if we have a big Venus, by pleasing others and by charming others to appeal to them to appeal to us, <laughs> right? It can be charming with an agenda. 
It's like its charisma catches and captivates. <laughs> it bewitches others and it enchants. Your Venus is like your magic spell. Venus is not always what you think. Like I said, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Number seven, I put money, self-worth, and even a different kind of violence. So Venus represents our values, our value system, what you care so deeply about, and our money. Are you tight or are you generous? Um, it represents, Venus rules the second house. And so you, if you have Venus in the second house, this is just a little teaser for my super supporters and for those who are going to go behind the scenes with me. Venus, uh, Venus's house is the second house and the seventh house of partnerships, but it, it represents our earnings and our spending potential and what we value, what we care about, what we're willing to pay for and what we find beautiful. Number eight, Venus is our capacity for love and intimacy. So it could be romantic love, but it's not sexual in nature. It's sweet and it's kind. It's flirting and it's foreplay. Mars is the actual sexual act of penetration. It is deep sexual uh, um, expression, but Venus is the flirtation or the art of love making, if you will. It is the foreplay and sort of the dance. It's also how you capture love, right? It's titillating and tantalizing, um, but it is not the actual act. So it is uh, a part of the seduction. And it's also the flirtation. So it shows how we're social are you antisocial or are you social? It's intimate. It's your intimacy with your inner self. I want you to think about that because it's complex. And is your Venus way out in front in your chart or if is it hidden and locked down? Number nine, Venus is the cosmic peacemaker. Yeah, we could all use a little bit of that right now, don't you think? This is going to show you um, do you have a preference for war or peace, right? Fighting or reconciliation. This shows us our urge for harmony and our need for peace and not just the need, not just the desire, but our actual ability to achieve it. This is the urge to reciprocate and cooperate with others. Cooperation is the number one key ingredient to how your Venus works. Because underneath it all, cooperation requires everything I just talked about. So it's, it's interesting. It's the cosmic peacemaker. Number 10. This is our magnetism. This is actually how we will attract other people. Is it knowingly or unknowingly? Do we work extra hard at it? Are we passive aggressive? Are we aware that we even attract other people? Are we oblivious, right? This is your personal magnetism. So if you have Venus on your ascendant, God bless you. Leave me a comment. Let me know. I want to know you because you are the great magnetic attractor. You must ooze beauty. And we're going to go more into that in my next video for my subscribers. Thank you so much if you're a subscriber. You mean the world to me. And if you're not, please subscribe so you can learn deep, honest, truthful astrology with integrity. If you want to go deeper, dive deeper, and learn more about yourself through the astrological lens, become a super supporter with me because we have so much fun with everything that you receive as a super supporter. Number 11, this is our taste and um, our values. This is what we believe in and how we express our, our values through our taste, through our style, through our dress, through the way that we 
decorate our home or our bedroom or ourself, right? This shows you, my outfit shows you a little piece of my value system. My flowers, my background show you a little piece of my values. That brings me to number 12. Venus is literally the way we dress. It is literally the clothes, the hair, the makeup, the beard, the ball cap, the glasses that we wear. It's our shoe closet, right? What does your shoe closet look like? Tell me. Is it flip-flops? Is it a bunch of variety? Is it stiletto heels? Is it comfortable shoes? Yeah, I've switched to, I've switched to, I don't even wear my high heels very much anymore. Now I'm wearing my tennies. <laughs> this is my Venus. <laughs> but hey, there's sparkles, <laughs> little sparkles on my tennies. What are your, what are your shoes these days? That's your Venus, right? That's your Venus talking. And right now, you know what my Venus is telling me? I want to be comfortable. I want to be super comfortable. Yeah. Number 13. I think I think the last one was 12, right? I'm trying to keep track. Number 13. Venus is our relationship to vanity. So, what's your relationship to vanity? Are you super vain? Will you go to go out of the house kind of, you know, scruffy? Venus can be very superficial, but it is our relationship to vanity. Do you hate vain people? Do you hate people who are just fancy all the time and dolled up and, you know, can't cope with just natural. And with Venus in retrograde this year in 2020, I really believe that the whole world, both collectively and individually, reevaluated what the concept of true beauty really is. I really think that we went through a cathartic change. Has beauty changed? Has your value system around beauty changed? That's an honest question. Leave me a comment below and, and let me know. Oh my gosh, by the way, I need to tell you, if you want to be entered in my contest for a deep dive natal report and a gorgeous natal chart, just leave me a comment, subscribe, and share this video with one person and tell me in the comments that you want to be in the contest and I will put your name in the hat. And I am drawing a name from my last four videos, including this one. I'm drawing a name for the lucky winner and I'll post it on my community tab to win the report and the gorgeous chart. So I hope that it's you. Just leave me a comment and let me know you want me to enter your name. You have to let me know that you want me to enter your name to get your name drawn. Um, but I also want to hear from you. I want to know about your Venus. Where is it? What sign is it in? What do you imagine that it says about you? Start the conversation. Get it rolling and going. Also, if you already are a super supporter, still put your name in because you can get that report for anybody in the world. You can get that for your lover or your brother or your mother or your daughter or your sister. It doesn't matter. Um, you're just going to send me uh, your email with the information of that person. Number 14. Venus is our physical characteristics too. It's literally our body. Do you have, if you have a Venus in Taurus, you probably have full lips and a full, like a rounder face and more curvy. You probably have an hourglass figure. Um, if you're Virgo in Venus, more, more Virgos are thin and, um, thin and fit and healthy. So Venus can really describe your, your body, your, the shape of you. So where is your Venus? If your Venus is in Sagittarius, you're probably going to be long and lanky. Um, and you're probably going to have an oblong face, maybe longer hair. Um, if your Venus is in Aquarius, you're probably going to have a little bit of a eclectic look about you. So Tell me, tell me, tell me, what do you look like? I want to know. And where is your Venus? And this is number 15, the one that really might surprise you the most. How you get jealous, how you experience envy, how you handle rivalry, and how you value yourself. 
So we can't determine the we can't determine intelligence or the depth of feelings in a chart. We can see when somebody is sensitive, um, but we can't always determine the depth of somebody's IQ. Uh, oftentimes we can see if somebody is smart, but we can't see if they got the opportunities to exercise that depth of feeling or develop their depth of feeling or their intelligence. But when feeling love, we can also ignite jealousy and insecurity to the degree that we feel threatened is to the same degree that we don't feel okay with ourselves. So Venus and the aspects to Venus are going to show how much we value ourselves. And if we feel attractive and lovable and beautiful, and if we have high self-worth, if we value ourselves, then we feel less threatened by others and we feel less rivalry by others and we are truly at ease with others. So if you are with a person who is really not jealous, I'm with a person who is almost 0% not jealous. He's not jealous of my success. He's not jealous of attention from others. He's just not a jealous person. He's not jealous for people at work who may do better than him on a day. Uh, he's just, he just doesn't get jealous. And he, deep down inside, has learned to truly value himself. And he is just such a good role model that way. So Venus can create enormous conflict inside of us because Venus, this was my number 15, my big surprise for you, is our jealousy meter. So do you get jealous? If you do, look at your Venus and tell me if it is in a hard place in your chart. And a hard place means, is it in opposition to a primary planet? Is it square at 90 degrees to a primary planet? Is it sitting next to a malefic planet like Mars and Saturn? And if you want to know more, if you're feeling like, God, I want to know, I want to learn this, come be a super supporter because this is what we're going to talk about in my next video over there. And in the meantime, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. Well, by Thanksgiving. So by the end of November, and I hope that you'll be one. I absolutely love having these conversations with you. And don't forget, for my super supporters, we're going to do questions and answers in my live stream on September 18th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And I hope so much you'll be there. All right. I can't wait to see you. I just adore you all. Mwah. Take good care. From my home to yours, I wish you the very best.